Hi, this video is for the uh, IT201. It's the online lecture. It's meant for the week of March 4th, um, but I had a student already contact me and asked me about how the the clock information the time is, is controlling the directional light source. And so I, I thought I'd try to do the video um, earlier and release it and see what, what it's like to um, do the online videos earlier instead of kind of releasing them after the, the live lecture video. So um, for this <coughs> video, we're going to talk about how I set up the directional light source and then how I connected it to the clock in its current situation. So if I click play and I click on the clock, so it happens to be uh, 740 p.m. here. So you see how that, that gets translated into hour 19. So you see my little my developer user interface, not my user focused user interface. Notice how my range got updated. So it's telling me that I'm on hour 19 um, and my clock is running and you can notice you can switch it between discrete and continuous and it's affecting the second hand. Um, if you remember in class, how when you switch between discrete and continuous, like all these hands get updated, like the hour and the minute hand actually like sits so, for example, 740, you're used to the hour hand moving between 7 and 8. And since we're later in the hour of 7, we're two-thirds to hour 8, we'd expect the hour hand to be in that kind of fractional position between 7 and 8. That's the information you get from the continuous. But the way that the tutorial we filed left off, like when you switch between discrete and continuous, both that hour and the minute hand get that pop between, nope, it's either all seven or all eight, there's no in between. So I, I updated that so that now this only impacts the movement of the second hand. Um, and if I scroll the hours right now, you notice how it doesn't do anything, but if we turn off real time, we can scrub through the hours in the day, zero to 24, I should probably update the zero to 23, but um, in either case, we can see what the lighting situation looks like. And then when we want to return back to real time, I'll notice as I'm scrubbing this, we're just changing the daylight. We're not changing the actual time on the clock that stays real time. That, that might be later on. Uh, we might impact the clock time. But if I click back to real time, it'll update the hour. Let me see. If it, no, I have to update that. I'll do that right now, actually. Um, it actually updates the sun information back to where it's supposed to be. So actually all I have to do is set this. Um, and I'm just going to put it in my update loop for right here. And then when I get to explain through everything, I'll, I'll talk about that part, that line of code. Let me just check it real quick. Turn off real time. Uh, nope, because it's constantly updating it. So you only want to do that if real time is turned on. We want to update the hours. Okay. So basically, if real time is on, we can't change the hours. But if we turn it off, we're fine. And if we turn it back, yeah, it updates hours to where it's supposed to be. Okay. That's better functionality. So let me, before I move into talking about the script, let me just show you kind of how I figured out the starting point for this light source um, or for rotating it. So let me see what I'm rotating. If I hunt down here, we're grabbing day cycle. If I click on that, okay, it's the light source. So you see that the directional light, first off, it's um, at an angle that still keeps things lit up well um, when we're in, not in play mode. And that right when I click play, you'll see that the light source gets updated to whatever the current time is. So that was important for me so that at least everything's in the normal daylight when I'm updating, editing, developing. 
Um, if I pull this out um, before I put the parent onto it and explain that, I'll say that I know that I want the, the light to, what I would like to do is I'm moving between a 24 hour clock starting at time or hour zero, moving to hour 24 or hour 23. Um, and I know that I want the light source to be pointing up because this is like it's midnight at hour zero. So it's at negative 90. And I know that um, in either direction, I don't really care yet, but somehow this angle is like um, six in the morning. And the reason I figured that out is because I know that this angle where the light is directly down, if I just look directly up, we're at high noon, the sun is at the right above us. And that's what this little gizmo is, is showing us. So that means negative 270 or 90 is high noon. Negative 90 is midnight. It's underneath the sun's underneath us. It's on like the other side of the planet right now. Um and these other numbers like 180 and zero would be like 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And um, <clears throat> I don't care about, you know, what, what's west and east with the sun rising and, and falling, that kind of stuff. So I know that something like a rotation of 90 is noon, or if we're going from zero to 24, it's going to be 12. A rotation of negative 90 or 270 degrees, however you want to depict the 360 degrees of the circle. This is midnight. This is actually our starting and our ending point. So if we go from hour zero to hour 24, we're going to go from rotation of 270. And as we're moving from hour zero to hour 12, we're going to move from 270 to 90. And then we're going to move cycle back through from hour 12 to hour 24 from 90 to negative 90. Um, but these numbers are hard to deal with. That's not what I want. I don't want a complicated math. What I would love is at hour zero, meaning midnight, the sun is angled like this, but I can put in a rotation of zero and get that. Then at hour 12 or noon, I can put in 180 degrees and the sun will be at high noon. And then from 180, we can move to 360, which is also zero for hour 24. So I just can cycle from zero all the way through to 360 degrees over 24 integers or 24 hours. So to do that, I just created an empty game object <clears throat> and I remember zeroed out the position and I know that I'm offset. So for example, this is midnight or hour zero. The sun needs to be at negative 90 on the X. So if I create a game object, game object, create empty, just call it light container, light parent. I just call it daylight. Put it at negative 90 because that's the number it needs to be pointing up at hour zero. Put the light source underneath it. And now look, at rotation zero, it's at my um, midnight setting or my hour zero setting. So let me pull the light source out again. So it's local rotation is negative 90 on the X. Since it doesn't have any parents, it's local and global rotation are exactly the same. So I take advantage of a parent child relationship and I set the parent offset to negative 90, move the child in, which is happens to be at the exact same rotation. The child will only show its local rotation. And so since the child had the same rotation as the parent, it shows no offset. It shows a rotation of zero, zero, zero. Behind the scenes, it actually is offset, just like its parent, but they happen to be offset the same amount, negative 90. So we messed around with local rotations when we mess around with um, changing it with code. And luckily, if you um, create a parent and update it, something that uh, makes sense, you can uh, 
zero out your information. And now I can move from zero to 360. I don't have to move to this irregular, like negative 90 to 270 or 270 to negative 90. Or I don't even have to think about this complicated situation because I made a parent child relationship. So um, I know that I can go from zero. Out, so let's pretend we're moving from hour zero. And I'm just moving through the rotation. So at rotation of 90, looks like where the sun's coming up at 6 a.m. Rotation of 180, the sun is right above us, it's noon. Rotation of 270, the sun is setting, it's 6 p.m. And rotation of 360, we've done a complete cycle and we're back at midnight. So that's great for me. And I'm just going to rotate the sun where to some random rotation. It doesn't matter because it's going to get off updated right away in our start, our awake functions, and just it'll update once we understand what the clock time is. So I leave it so that it's at a, a nice setting. I can see it. Um, and it's easy to work in the editor. So next stage. All right, we have the clock object which has a clock script on it. So my clock script, um, all these, this is left over from last class. You should be familiar with this. Even this continuous bool was from last class. I won't cover this yet, um, but I will start here saying public transform day cycle. Okay. We don't need to do a public game object. We're going to dive down a level. We're going to dive into a component. We're going to dive straight to the transform. So we don't have to do the get component or dot transform. And I'm going to say, I want to grab a transform, save it out. And this will be um, created and it'll say none. And you just drag your light source, not its parent, the actual light, the directional light into there. Because remember with the parent, our light sources now can read zero to 360 and it's meaningful, easy math for us to figure out with the, with the time cycle. So now our clock script is aware of this light source because of this. So I'll cover this later, cover that later. Um, so when we awake, when we first start, we grab discrete time. We do a debug statement here, yeah, sure. We're setting the initial clock situation, hours, minutes, seconds. And we're setting our day cycle, our light, its local rotation, which has been zeroed out. We're doing a quaternion.euler. Euler angles are very easy for us to use. X, Y, and Z, zero to 360 degrees. So we don't care about Y and Z, because we were just manipulating the light and we saw that we only need to rotate on the X. So what do we do for X? We take the actual hour, which is gonna be zero to 23, because um, technically the day would end at 23 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. So you're only gonna get zero to 23. <clears throat> In fact, let me go change my range right here. Just say zero to 23. And um, we're going to multiply this. So whatever the current hour is when we first start, we're going to multiply it by our degrees per day cycle. Oh, this is new too. So degrees per day cycle. Remember these constant floats we made hours, um, 12 hours in a clock cycle. So 36 divided by 12 is 30 degrees. Uh, six minutes per hour. So 360 degrees divided by... 60 minutes, six degrees, same for seconds. Now we're doing something a little different here. We're not doing a clock cycle of 12 hours, but a full day of 24 hours. <clears throat> so even though the clock cycles twice around on 12 hours is a visual representation. Um, and as humans, you're just supposed to know whether it's the first half of the day or the second half of the day, just because you've been awake. So when you read a clock, you should know if it mean, means AM or PM. In this case, the actual, we're controlling 
the sunlight, which its information, its visual information is actually different for throughout the whole 24 hour cycle. So we're actually doing a full 360 degrees rotation on the sun for 24 hours, not 12 hours. So to cycle the whole sun around the earth, we're going to do 360 divided by 24 hours, which is 15 degrees per hour. And so notice that's half has changed because this is covers 12 hours per 360 degrees. This covers 24 hours per 360 degrees. So when we first start, we take the local rotation of the sun and only change the X Euler angle. So however many hours times degrees per day cycle, which is 15. So when it's midnight, this will be zero. This, uh, we'll have zero degrees. The sunlight will point directly up. When it's 12, it'll be 12 times 15 or 180 degrees. The sun will point down, it'll be above us and so on. Um, and we end up updating it in our update loop down here. But so I think it's better if I, let me just move line by line at this point. So you can see how we're setting up the rotation of the sun right when we wake up. And that's how we figured out the math and that's how we connected it. And that's how we made this game object so that we have a nice, easy math situation. So you have a 360. So let's start keeping track of what hour it is. Not in the clock, not on the light, but right here on our own little dev interface so that we can eventually start to interactively change it. So we have a public int called hours. It's only public because we want to look at it. So you could make that serializable private. And we're going to range it from 0 to 23. That is the full range that we get. And if I move it down here, I have to save it. I'll update to 23. Let it compile. And now it goes 0 to 23. All right. So what do we do with this information when we first start? Well, we set it equal to the time of day, the discrete time, the hours. So whenever I click play, not only does the clock get updated, the, the sun location gets updated, but now this hours slider gets updated. <clears throat> All right, so now I can move off of here and down into the update loop. And the only thing I didn't cover is this new bool called real time, which we'll cover in a second. So um, remember with this, we had this, um, if we're checking continuous time, run update continuous else to update discrete. Well, I didn't like how the hour and the minute hand had that pop be so discrete it's it's either a seven or an eight if if it's 7 57 p.m so if i click play it is now 7 57 p.m um we expect it to look kind of like this where it's almost on the eight this is how we read the time that okay it's a few minutes before eight right um but if i uh put hours as discrete it would be seven this would not move till eight until we actually hit eight o'clock so to us as we naturally reading time it's like oh no it's six it's a few minutes to uh seven it's 658 or whatever so uh, that did not work well for me so no matter if we're continuous or discrete we're going to record the data structure the, the continuous data structure every update loop because we're going to keep minutes and hours updated on the continuous level we're not ever going to use discrete because it doesn't make sense for the way people's read clock. We are used to this fractional movement, this continuous movement of hours and minute hands that shows how far we're moving through an hour or through a minute. So no matter what option we pick, discrete or continuous, we're always setting our hours and minutes to continuous. And, to, and if that's the case, then we need to keep track or keep continually update our continuous data structure because we're always updating our hours and minutes to that data structure no matter what. So I'm going to jump to here and just wrap up that conversation.
So, since we're already keeping track of the hours and minutes in our update loop, all we have to update, depending on if the user likes continuous or discrete, is the way that the second hand moves. So if the user likes continuous motion, then seconds is just going to come from our continuous data structure, which has already been updated. So we don't need to um, assign it and check what the current time is because we do that all, all the time anyway to keep our hours and minutes on, a, on the continuous style. If the user wants discrete, then we do have to go update our time discrete data structure. And we set our seconds to the discrete second. So we get that like pop movement, that discrete movement on the seconds. So notice I um, this data structure is, is null, it's empty. Um, uh, actually, you know, at the awake, we do record it uh, initially. Um, and I use that to, to um, move my sun around. So you know, that is, if I did stay in play mode for a long enough time, the sun would pop um, as its degree movement changes. You wouldn't get like a continuous movement of the sun. Um, so if we move from, let's say, whatever hour 115 is, because we're moving at 15 degrees, then we go to 130, or you don't even see it, it just pops off 100, it'll be this pop right on the hour. So, um, you know, I'll probably after this video update this to be continuous so that the sun actually flows through. And I'd have to think about if I want to switch this from int to um, a, a float format, which if I do end up doing that, those changes, I'm going to do that in the second video since I'm already recording this video, but I'll probably end up doing a float here. And when I first start, I'll probably do a time continuous check and, and make sure my hours are on a on time continuous so that the sun. So even if in there for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you'll still see if you're, if you're probably not paying attention, but the sun will actually slowly transition like six, eight degrees or something instead of just popping 15 degrees on the hour. Um, but anyway, so if the user does want discrete time, then that's the only time I'm only when we go through this elf else um, statement and do we actually up, bother, you know, updating this data structure because that's the only time we would use that discrete seconds. So that's how I fix the clock. And it sounds like based on this conversation, I'm going to have to fix the how the sun moves and also how we're um, using our own little interface, which will eventually become the user interface. I'm going to continue on this, this iteration on it for now. So I covered all that. So the only thing left we have to cover is this section right here. <clears throat> so bool, public bool real time is true. So by default, bools are false or zero. So by continuous, that's when you click play. Continuous is off and real time is on. So by default, our behavior is that we are keeping track in a real time manner. We are not overriding it. So if real time, which by default is true, then we record in our hours and um, so that this slider gets updated. So that the UI is always resp uh, responsive. It's, it's uh, showing the actual accurate time. It's just not being default to some number just sitting there, even though when we click play, those numbers do change and then our UI doesn't update. So if we're doing real time, we're going to update our slider here, which actually it's being updated on the update loop, which kind of like um, is also has an additional function of um, making the slider not interactable. Technically it is, but it's being updated so quickly and snapping back to its uh, existing number that you don't even have the ability to change it. Um, and the other thing we do if it's real time is we update the sun, the day cycle. We change the rotation based on the hour of the day in a discrete manner, which we will change to continuous. 
multiplied by de degrees per day cycle, which is 15. And we don't care about Y or Z. Else, meaning real time has been turned off, meaning the developers overrid it. And he actually does want to use this hours slider to change the sun location to see what the different times of day feel like. So then we update the rotation, the local rotation of our sun, not based on the actual real time information, but off of our um, slider, off of our variable that we are changing or potentially could change because we've turned off real time. And we may have not changed this yet, but we have the ability now to, and if we do, this is how these hour, this integer is getting changed by the developer changing it here. And that changes the sum. So if I click play, and we've moved actually to eight o'clock. So this is actually a good example. So the daylight, you saw how the sun was um, just kind of falling off the horizon. If I, I don't know if I can, it's, it's being overridden now by this. So if I turn this off, I should be able to manually, nope, I can't, I have to do it. The script is completely overriding it. So anyway, um, it was at hour seven, which is actually 19. So it looked like this, if you remember. 19 because it's 12 plus 7 when you have to in. And <clears throat> just so coincidentally, you know, it helps my lesson that we transitioned to 8 o'clock, which moved the sun another 15 degrees. If I click here, and from negative 60, where were we at? Negative 75. All right, so we should have seen a soft transition of the sun going away into darkness. Instead, we had an, in like, if they were painting, it would have been an instant snap at 8 p.m. And the sun would have just been gone. So it's good to see that. But anyway, you can see what the different hours of the day feels like for you to work on different feature sets. And then we're like, nope, I want to go back to real time. Click there. It'll update the sun location, and now it updates our slider so that we know what the exact time is. We're at 8 p.m. or hour 20. Um, <clears throat> so my next, probably what I'll work on besides what I just talked about, the continuous area, is have this actually updating the clock, too. Um, and eventually I got to get this into our user interface. So I don't know if I'm going to do a drop down of, of like morning, afternoon, evening, have some preset times from the pick um, or do a slider or um, start to make the clock interactable. Because even if I don't make the clock interactable, you see, I can like, this is the function, the painting functionality of the deleting yet since the clock had colliders on it. Um, the clock face doesn't have a collider on it. That's why it doesn't delete. But the other objects do have a collider on it. That's why I was able to delete them. So that's uh, some other functionality I'm going to have to work on for this week. Um, but, but in either case, I think this is a good conversation. I covered um, the, the grouping here to make it much easier, easier, easier rotational math, 0360. And I covered all the clock script uh, functionality.